Winter Haven, Florida, two children encounter strange beings in their home, which they believe came out of the lake. The events took place around 1970. The witness, a woman named Maggie, who was a child at the time, claims that she would frequently wake up in a completely paralyzed state. The only thing Maggie could move was her eyes. It would take only a few seconds for her to realize that she was no longer inside her bedroom, but rather she was inside a, quote, strange place, unquote. She recalled that in each instance, she would be laying flat on a table. Her sister, who was around her age, was laying flat on another table next to her. Whenever Maggie could see her, the sister appeared to be unconscious. Maggie also observed humanoid creatures moving around them in the room. They were shorter than me, though I was a child. They had very long arms and fingers, it seemed. Maggie claims that whenever she would have these moments of waking up inside this strange room, she would almost immediately fall back to sleep. Later, she would awaken in her bed, back in her bedroom. She remembered having a weird numbing sensation all over her body after these types of experiences. Maggie claims that a few times, she managed to crawl out of bed and look out her window. On a few occasions, she could see the beings walking away from her window and going into a lake, which was very close to her house. They were wearing what looked like some kind of body covering suits, I guess for diving. They went under the water and they were gone. Interestingly, Maggie claims her parents forced her to see psychologists after she tried to alert them to the strange nighttime visits. Later in life, her sister came forward to corroborate the experiences. My sister told me later in adulthood that she too sometimes awoke in a strange place on a table with me unconscious on another table next to hers. She didn't say anything to anyone because she saw what I went through with all the ridicule and psych therapy. It's interesting that Maggie claims that the beings were wearing what to her look like diving suits. Many abductees speak of encountering beings wearing diving suits. Even more interesting is her recollection of the beings going into the lake. Many ufologists have noted a link between water and alien encounters. David Politis also wrote an entire book detailing the correlation between missing people, strange deaths, and large bodies of water. Had beings actually landed and abducted these girls? I guess it's not that outlandish that they might want to conceal themselves using the cover of a lake while they carried out their activities. Is that what happened in this case? The witness offered to share more details, including the location of the house, although I'm unsure if UFO Sentinel, who received the case, actually took her up on it. December 2nd, 2016. A woman named Tanya told radio host Clyde Lewis about a bizarre encounter she had while driving home from her job late one evening in the mid-1980s. Tanya claims at the time of the sighting, she was working late shifts at a place in Oregon and would often get off work in the middle of the night when most people were at home in bed. She would drive a country road surrounded by acres of farmer's fields to get to and from work. She was living in Malala, and it was a lengthy commute each day. On this particular night, she recalls seeing something ahead of her in the road as she drove. To her, the object appeared to be moving above the ground, coming towards her in the middle of the roadway. Assuming it to be an owl or some other bird, she decided to slow down. Eventually it got close enough to her that she could see it. It was black and large, covering her entire windshield to the point that it blacked out everything. Then it seemed to disappear under the front of her car. Then, all of a sudden, underneath my car it was like thump thump thump, and I was like, I thought I ran over something. I looked back, I looked to the right, to the left, you know, my mirrors, you know, the sides, turned my head. I had a station wagon. Anyway, all of a sudden, I see these arms, a hand, and a wing-like, and all of a sudden, the face. And the eyes were an orangey color, but they were human-like too, but very large. The nose? It looked human. But the skin? You could see the veins on the wing. It's leathery. It was like if you held your ear up to a light, you could kind of see right through it a little bit. It was like that. At this point, the creature crawled up her car so that it was on the roof. It came over in front of the windshield a bit with its arms and a wing was flapping here and there. And next thing I know, I heard thump, 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 thump. All of a sudden, it was on the backside on the ground and I'm still moving. Tanya claims she began to wonder if the creature was injured. 
It's my character, you know. I don't want to hit and run anything. I'm debating that. And I slowed down for some reason. It got up, it turned, and looked at me. And it was like crippled, struggling to stretch and everything. Finally it got stretched. It turned towards the field. And the field had wood railing, pasture, like with a tree line in the background and a moon. And it flew. But it flew. It hit the ground again. Because it was wobbling. And it got up. And it flew again. And it disappeared. The incident left her badly shaken, and she only told one other person about the encounter, fearing people would assume she was crazy. Honest thing was, the moon shone at certain times, and it was almost like it brightened up, and I saw him. I was on the driver's side. He was on the passenger side when he was on the side of the car, and you know, I was terrified. 2001 Jeepers Creepers was released to theater. She was shocked at how closely the creature in the movie resembled what she saw that night in the 80s. She even wondered if the filmmakers had, possibly, encountered a similar type creature which inspired them to make the movie. Interestingly, sightings of this creature, which has been nicknamed by some researchers as the Jeepers Creepers monster due to its similar appearance, is not all that uncommon. In his 2013 book, Encounters with Flying Humanoids, Ken Gerhard documents a number of eyewitness reports involving a similar type creature. While it's fairly common knowledge that the opening sequence of Jeepers Creepers was lifted from a real-life incident in which Ray and Mary Thornton observed Michigan killer Dennis Tupuy dumping a body, it is still up for debate if the rest of the movie was based on something real as well.